Hello everybody, welcome back to God Get Running. I'm Phil Hargis. It's good to see you guys again. Uh, today we have another, uh, we have a local celebrity in the house. He's uh, one of Washington DC's most uh, accomplished runners for sure. Um, he's, if you've done any of the 5Ks, 10Ks, 10 milers, half marathons, marathons here in the area, uh, you've probably seen this guy out there. He's usually out there uh, finishing up the race when most of us are just getting to, getting to the halfway point or something. But uh, this guy's awesome. According to his athletics.com page, which I know is a little bit behind. He's done 43 5Ks, 50 10Ks, 24 half marathons, 79 marathons, which I'm told is actually closer to about 150 full marathons, 750 milers, three full 100 mile races, and most recently, uh, a 135 mile race called Badwater. Um, so we have here in the house today, we have uh, Michael Wardian. Nice to be here. Michael, it's great to much. see you, man. I'm, I'm so excited to have you here, man. I've been Thanks. looking forward to meeting you for a long time. Like I said, I see you out there on the streets all the time, you know, white hat on backwards, you know, like I said, the finishing races when I'm just getting to, <laughs> getting to Haynes Point. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I'm, I'm happy to be here and it's always a pleasure to, to be a part of the community. So uh, you haven't always been a runner. Um, you, you're a local guy though. You went to Oakland High School. So I did. Crosstown route, route from my Madison. Um, you know, we yes. had our share of battles there. I mean, that tradition goes on and you played lacrosse, but didn't run. That's right, I did, yeah. I was a lacrosse player. I played uh, uh, Vienna lacrosse and went all the way through Vienna lacrosse till I got to Oakton High School and I played at Oakton and uh, we did pretty well. Uh, we actually won the states when I was there and then uh, I went to Michigan State to play lacrosse division one and got to play some cool schools. That was a big deal to me at the time. And, uh, you know, I, I actually decided to get an education, too, so that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> what did you go to school for up there? Uh, international Relations. International Relations, okay. So um, that actually tied in well with the job I ended up getting as an international shipbroker. Okay, so you went there. I mean, obviously, with lacrosse, you probably did a lot of running. I mean, I, it's fairly comparable to maybe a soccer game. I hear they run, like, six miles in a soccer game. You know, you probably run a lot of miles, or several miles, like four or five miles during a lacrosse game, too. And did, did that... Yeah, you know, so then you graduate from college and like how'd you get into the how'd you get into this running man because now you just you're doing it all. Yeah, I uh, I was lucky. I, I got into it uh, when I stopped playing lacrosse. I wanted to stay fit. And I was used to working out a lot and um, just started doing like 5k or you know 3 or 4 miles and then I went to my buddy's house for Easter and his mom showed me a picture of Vicky Voison, my buddy Vince, who actually just crewed for me at Badwater. Okay, um, we're going to get to that in a second. Yeah, sure. yeah exactly. <laughs> so uh, he, his mom showed me a picture of the Boston Marathon, and I said, wow, that's cool. I've always seen that on TV. And then uh, I, uh, you know, I'd, I'd known about, like, Iron Man and, like, you know, wide world of sports, and you see, like, crazy people doing, yeah. like, Comrades Ultra Marathon and stuff. And I thought, wow, someday that would be neat. But you never know, like, when that day is going to come. And I just decided when I was sitting at – his mom's kitchen table and she was showing me pictures of like her medal and and like just like her wrapped in like a little emergency blanket and I was like oh, I want to do that and she's like yeah right you know like <laughs> high school or college kid he doesn't know what he's another talking about another kid in a dream right yeah exactly and so she actually had somebody in her office or she must have done it uh, photocopied a, a schedule we were just talking earlier about right. you know like um, a training schedule that was in a book and so if it said run six miles on Monday, I would run six miles Monday and Tuesday eight miles and six miles Wednesday, Thursday off or, you know, whatever. And, and you, you just look at a target date. And I knew that to qualify for Boston, I had to run a marathon beforehand. So I ran Marine Corps in uh, 1996 and I 96. qualified. So 96 was your first Marine Corps marathon. So you ran Boston in 97. I did. And then after Boston, something must have magical happened. He's like, all right, well, now there's all these other great races out there that I want to do. And, yeah, and, and then basically and, started checking them off your list. Well, and yeah, after Boston, I, I decided that, you know, I, I, I ran, I think, like 255 or something. And uh, I decided that I wanted to try and make a local team. So I, your co-host, Chris Farley, uh, at Pacers, I decided I wanted to make the running team. And... They kind of laughed at me because I, I <laughs> didn't. Uh, Farley does that to all of us, man. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So uh, I, I decided that I wanted to try and make a local, like, elite team, and uh, they, they said, yeah, sure. You know, if you come to our track workouts, you know, you'll probably eventually get good enough to make our team. And so I did, and I actually, the another guy that crewed for me was in my first track workout group, Rick Poppleton and Jim Bembo. They were 
both in my first group as a, I think Pacer still has it, these training programs yeah. and you meet like Tuesday nights or something. And so I, uh, I went to that and then I went to a race, uh, a local race here in, um, uh, it's called the Wawa 10 miler. It used to be called the Hartwood 10 miler. Okay. Uh, and I actually beat some of the guys on the running team and they were like, hey, do you want to be on our team? And I was <laughs> like, yeah, that's why I've been running this hard. So uh, I got on the Pacers team and I was on their team all the way until just a few years ago when I, um, I got picked up by some of the bigger sponsors and um, I'm still really good friends with, you know, Chris and the Farley family. And, sure, sure. And, um, you know, I still try and make all their races that I can when I'm in town. Yeah, and you are. You're always out there for the races, and they, they you know, obviously do a great job putting on. They do so much for the running community here. Yeah, in exactly. The I mean, I think all the running stores do, and, and uh, I think they're one of the premier ones in the area. So we're so, lucky to have such a big group of you know, specialty stores that some some areas don't have any, you know? Yeah, it's it's true, I man. You can go to these areas and, you know, they just don't really have that sort of that running, just that awesome running community that we have here in Washington, D.C. And, and yeah, no. like we're saying, there's no better way to see Washington, D.C. than running through the streets of it on yeah. and having them to yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, people pay, you know, thousands of dollars to come here and see the Capitol and we can go for a long run and hit the Capitol, the Washington Monument, <laughs> it's, the Lincoln it, Memorial, Thomas Jefferson. Kennedy Center. Yeah. I, I mean, and then you can go into Rock Creek Park and hit trails too. I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah, you can spend the whole day out there, and I'm sure you did a lot of uh, a lot of those long days where you're just basically out there running for the entire day in preparation for the race you most recently ran. Well, second because you had to go and run another marathon last weekend, but yeah. the Badwater 135 yes. mile race um, is probably not a. Uh, a race that all of our viewers here, you know, in this DC area have, have ever even heard of. If you read Born to Run, you've heard of this race and some of the people in that. Um, but you just recently ran in this race. Um, it's a 135 mile race in Death Valley, California. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm dying to hear about this thing, man. So yeah, <laughs> why don't you tell me all about it? <laughs> it it's it's one of those um, incredible experiences. It's uh, it's epically difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but you love difficult, though, right? I do. Yeah, I do. And um, and I, I love to challenge myself, and, and uh, I think that it's one of the races in the world that claims to be one of the toughest races in the world. There's, there's a few of them, and I've done Marathon de Saab in the Sahara Desert where you carry your sack for a week, and you have yeah. to really monitor your food and, and try and take care of your feet and make sure you don't get stung by scorpions and all the and kind snakes, of snakes, right? They have snakes. I don't. I have never seen any snakes, but I've seen scorpions, uh, and those things are nasty. Um, so, you, that's a, that's a really tough race with dunes and and heat, and then Badwater, but that's a stage race. And then Badwater, the race that I just did in Death Valley, it's got the heat, and you're in the desert, and it's the average temperature is like 121 degrees, and of course it was like. My luck, it was just average, you know, so it wasn't as hot as it's been in years past, like where it's been 130, <laughs> but it wasn't as cool as it's, you know, it's been before, so. It's still 120 degrees Yeah, there, 120 though, <laughs> degrees is hot, and, um, and it, so it starts at the lowest point in the continental U.S. at Badwater, which I think is 282 feet below sea level, mm -hmm. and you run up to the Mount Whitney portal. 135 miles later, uh, and that's at like 8,300 or 8,900 feet or something. Um, and, and, and through the course of 135 miles, uh, you go over three different mountain ranges, and they're all about like 5,000 feet. So, yeah, I, I have the actual numbers here. For, yeah, there you go. Badwater for the flat miles, you know, the Badwater Stovepipe Wells is 41 miles, Panamint Floor, 2 miles, Darwin Flats, 4 miles, Owens Valley to Lone Pine, 22 miles for 69 miles of flat running. Uh, the uphill is 46 miles of total uphill running for a plus 13,000 feet total. And it probably seemed like plus 26,000 feet to you, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all that steel pipe wells, I mean, Panama, Great West, and Lone Pine, the Whitney Portal, and then only 20 miles of downhill. Um, Towns to Panamint, Panamint Valley, 3,400 feet, and then Darwin to Owens Valley, yes. uh, 12 miles. So. Not a lot of relief for, those, uh, for the downhill burst there, but. No. You know, plus 13,000 feet of uphill running. Right, in and, 120 degree weather. And then, but, and it's also continuous, so you have to battle the, the fatigue of staying up and then also trying to fuel for that long. And it was also my longest run up to that point was 100 miles at one time. Uh, so for me to 
to add an extra 35 miles was a big challenge. And then not just distance, but also time running. Because usually, I think my longest 100 miler was like Western States. And I think that was like 19 and a half hours or something. So to, to, I ran 26 hours and 22 minutes and one second and one at second. Battery. Well, I ran, I, I, ran, I moved. For 20, <laughs> I didn't run the whole thing, unfortunately. Is in a constant state of motion out there. So you, you had to take some pretty special people along with you to, to help you out with this race. Tell us about the crew and what these guys do and how you selected them. Yeah, it was it was a it's it's a logistical challenge to to put together a team for Badwater, and I think your team is almost as important as you are. I mean, the training you do, it can all go downhill without a, a quality team. And so I put together uh, my brother was my crew chief, uh, just because he's been one of my. Oh, he just known me my whole life, but sure. he's also been to a lot of my races and seen me in a lot of bad places and a lot of good places. And so uh, he was my crew chief. Then I had um, Jay Batchin, who is the U.S. rep for Marathon de Saab, and he and his wife, Lisa Smith Batchin, she was my first coach and only coach. And so he's known okay. me since 2000, and, but he's also, his wife, Lisa, has done the race 10 times. So he's been oh my he's God. been he's been tasked with crewing it quite a bit. So he knows basically the course inside and out, and he's just a logistical mastermind. So it was fantastic to have him. Uh, then I had uh, my two my buddy. I was just telling you about Vince Voison, uh, whose mom Vicky was the one that got me into running, right. kind of in the first place, or at least into like marathon running. Um, my buddy Andy Bertinoli. Uh, who's just like uh, an incredible like tech savvy guru like he had like a time lapse camera set up and like all he has like a hundred and hundred cameras all going around <laughs> on at the same time but just like a super cool guy he crewed for me at Western States my buddy Rick Poppleton that was on that first track uh, group that I was with at Pacers and then uh, Ian Sharman from uh, North Face, so a fellow North Face athlete and just like a stud runner. I think yeah. this year, earlier this year, he ran like 12 hours and 48 minutes for 100 miles. So like about 7.30 pace for 100 miles, which is just wicked fast. <laughs> and, yeah, and, he's, and he's beaten me at, at some big races in the past, like Comrades, not this year, but the year before, and um, the Miwok 100K. So I knew that you know, he could run with me if I was feeling good. And, and he was also, you know, he's also a guy that just finished 10th at Western State. So, like, a big mm. stud. Yeah. And just to have him to do a lot of, you know, we really tasked him with running a lot of the hard, <laughs> the hard miles. You know, like, there was an 18-mile climb up Town Pass, and he did a lot of that with me. And um, he, was, he was just diehard. I, I mean, I think all the guys actually did a lot of training for this. So I think everyone ran about 20 miles and I think Ian did 40 miles or something. So I had a lot of support. So the, one of the weird things about this race, I, I kind of want to get a start to finish, you know, recap from you on this thing, um, if, if, if you could. I mean, like you, like you start off, I mean, I know, I know you had the crew and they're with you, but they, you can't pick them up until mile 17, which is one of the, one of the rules. And I That's guess true. Some yeah. very strict rules on this thing, but. Uh, there is a lot of rules. It's like, uh, <laughs> I was joking, if anyone's ever seen uh, old school, where it's like, you have to be very good at paperwork. I think that's one of the requirements of uh, completing <laughs> bad water is there's, there's uh, rules for everything. And I understand that because it's, you know, an extreme environment and, you know, there's, uh, you have to have crew on, and it's a road. And so, you know, people start getting sleepy and you need, you need to have a lot of rules to make sure everyone stays safe. Sure. Um, so yeah, no, no one could run with me the first 17 miles. And I went out really, really conservatively, like 10 minute miles, uh, a little bit under yeah, I to saw try that. and keep my core temperature down. And my plan was to go out pretty conservatively uh, save myself, keep my core temperature down, and then, you know, I, I should, if you look at paper, uh, I should be one of the fastest guys in the field. So, like, if, if I felt well later in the race, I thought I'd be able to run faster than everyone else. And unfortunately, I had a lot of bad patches. So, th th so that was your strategy going, so you, you, you've read the rules and you know what all the rules are going in this race, and it sounds like they have quite a few. So yeah. then your, your, what was your strategy? I mean, was your, was your goal time to go break 24 hours? Or yeah, my goal time was to win, break the obviously. course record and, and uh, to win. I mean, I started out the race like 20 minutes slower than, than most people run that first section, but that was 
to try and keep my temperature down and, and really not tax myself for later in the race. And then also, since I hadn't run more than 100 miles, I wanted to make sure that I you know, was able to comp run the whole distance, even though it didn't work out that way. Well, that sort of racing philosophy is actually something that I think could benefit the viewers at home that are running in, the, in, in some of these you know, 10 miles, half marathons, and full marathons. Is You don't need to start off by, by any of these long distance races, but by sprinting out of the gate. I mean, there's a lot to be, that I've learned in my, sh my short running career, there's a lot, there's, there's, it's almost a way more value to like hold yourself back at the beginning of these races and then gradually build up momentum during the course of the race. And that sounds like it was certainly uh, your, 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 your philosophy going into approach to this race. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I, usually I don't <laughs> take that approach. Usually I like to run from the front and really take it to, uh, take it to everybody else and sure. just test, test myself. Uh, but again, I, I was thinking that you know, it'd be wise to be careful of the heat. And I had an episode at Marathon de Saab where I got um, a little bit uh, under the weather because of the sun and going out really aggressively on the third day there last year. And so I wanted to be cautious of that. And I'd done a lot of sauna training and, and heat training. I was running around you know, at lunch with my coat on and like all bundled up. So I knew I could handle the heat, but I, I just wanted to try and be really cautious and um, you know, I, I thought it was a good strategy, and unfortunately, it put me in a little bit of a deficit versus the the two guys that ended up winning, or coming in first and second. But you know, I think that I, I thought that that was the right strategy, and maybe if I do it again, I might try things a little differently. But yeah, that was the plan. It sounded like it sounded to me like you had a really good strategy going in there. I got your splits there. I mean, you were at two thirty five through through uh, the 17 miles before you picked up your paces, and, and, and back in thirtieth, which I think a lot of people were probably surprised to see back that far. But that was obviously your strategy. Um, and then 42 miles. Oh shoot! I don't have your split for that. But you know, Furnace Creek to. I mean, so how was the first? How were the first couple legs of this race? I mean, they're, they're, it's from a from a scenic from a just like how, oh, it's how did you like it, the race? Uh, I thought it was fantastic. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a pretty surreal environment. I mean, you know, like you're starting out and you're in these salt flats and uh, you're just running and it's pretty it's pretty bumpy but nothing too bad. And you're on the road. Yeah, you're on you're time. on road the whole time, and uh, you're just running, and it's just wicked hot. It's um, it's uh, super 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 hot, and you're just trying to stay cool. And I'm just running really slow, picking off people. And then at 17 miles, you turn the corner, and you run uh, from Furnace Creek to Stovepipe Wells, and it's again pretty flat, gradual winding. Um, <laughs> really sparsely populated nothing out there but as you turn the corner the headwind that comes is just like somebody just taking a, a, <laughs> a, a hair dryer. dryer to your face and it's just unbelievably Ugh. hot and this massive headwind so you're fighting a headwind all the way from 17 to 42 oh, man. and then it and then when you get to 42 you have an 18 mile climb up to town pass so you've just fought your way through the headwind and then you have this monster climb that you have to tackle so that's very hard. And then you get to the top, and it's basically an eight-mile bomb down the other side. <laughs> and then you go straight for a little bit. And then you start climbing up this, the next pass. Uh, and then that yeah. just takes all night. And it's, it's, it's an incredible, because you see the, the sun go down, and then you see the moon come up. And then it's pretty cool. You got to see the moon go follow all the way through the sky wow. and set, which was fantastic. And then. The stars are just like in your face. Um, it's like you're standing in the Milky Way, oh, and then man, it's just heaven. Oh yeah, it was fantastic. And then uh, I talked to Jamie Donaldson, who gave me a lot of tips, and it was really helpful. And and Dean Carnassus and uh, Marsha Orrick and Lisa and someone. They had told me that you got to watch out for the road runner on the left hand side of the road. So there's this tree as you get to like 90 miles uh, that looks like the road runner. It's super cool. So, <laughs> so it just came in, as I was running, a car came by and you could, it lit it up and you could see like the road runner. So you pass that and then you, you bomb into Lone Pine and it seems like you're close as you come down the hill. The, the sun was starting to come up and it became morning and I started feeling better. I crossed the 100 mile mark and I started picking up the pace and I dropped it all the way down to like six minute miles trying to catch up to the guys <laughs> that were in front of me. So I was able That's to run, awesome. yeah, I was able to run some really fast miles for like 13 miles. miles. And then, um, 
and then the wheels just fell off again and I started uh, becoming sick to my stomach and I had to walk and then I cruised into Lone Pine and then and then once you get to Lone Pine which is like a pretty big town for for that area you go through Lone Pine and then you just see these mountains in the in the <laughs> distance and they're just massive and you're like there's no way we're gonna have to climb up that and of course like the road turns <laughs> and you just start climbing for 13 miles it's got to be one of the hardest marathon, uh, half marathons in the country. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, of course, it's at the end of 122 miles that you've already run. So uh, I think, I, think I, I definitely set my personal slowest time for 13 miles. <laughs> it's not quite like running up the hill to Iwo Jima or Harper no, Hill in no, Boston, no, no. is it? <laughs> no, it's more like running like Mount Washington, if you've ever run that race oh, before. Oh, man. So that was, the, that was the race. And then describe to me your feelings then when, you see the, uh, when you first see the finish line. <laughs> well, I didn't know if I was going to make it, actually, because uh, I, I had a really, really bad patch four miles out and then another uh, relapse like two miles out. And I was just sitting. This is the first time I sat down in the car and, and the, my team's huddled up around me like, a, like, a, like I'm the quarterback, you know, and the Washington Post is there. They're doing a story on the race. and I've Everybody's just, documenting, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I've just become sick all over my feet. And I, I, I'm just like, I've got cold, you know, like... I'm just getting all chilled and it's like 115 degrees and I'm thinking uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it and then eventually my crew gets me out and I start walking up the hill and I turn into the uh, into the finish line and you can't see it it's just all these switchbacks so like they're just lying to me like oh it's just you know it's just <laughs> half a mile and I'm like uh -huh, okay yep. just half a mile and then Eventually, I turned the corner and I see it, and we all cross together, and it was just incredible. So that's good. The whole team comes out there, and you guys get to run across the finish line. Yeah, there. exactly. Because it's it's completely like you'd be dead if the, you didn't have your team. Like I know there's Marshall Ulrich's done it by himself, but I think he's probably one of the only people that's done it self-supported. I mean, I would have been toast. I heard you describe your crew van as the portable feast. <laughs> yes, the movable feast. The movable kinda, feast. Kinda, I think Hemingway wrote about that, right? Or something. <laughs> That's awesome. Man. So yeah, it was. And it was too bad because we had we went to Walmart and we dumped all this money into like getting foods that I thought I would like. And then at the end of the day, I ended up eating, you know, a bunch of power gels and uh, watermelon and a couple pints of blueberries, strawberries. Fresh fruit, man. Always comes back to that. Yeah, and bananas. Lots of bananas, probably. Yeah, but uh, but I, I think if I do a race like this again, I really need to figure out you know what I can do differently on that front. Yeah, I mean it's it's I mean every runner learns something from a race, and when you're when you're running a 135 mile race, I mean you must have just learned a ton of stuff about yourself, about your body, yeah, and about your thresholds. I mean, it, obviously, it sounds like the uh, the the nutrition thing is something that. Then, you know, yeah, you, you it's can, something I need to definitely uh, dial in for these longer events. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just totally awesome, man. Like I hear the the stories about like Badwater. I never actually saw the movie. I guess there's a Badwater movie out there too. I just found yeah, out. Yeah, I think there's a race. couple of them, like Running on the Sun yeah, and. Uh, <clears throat> Did like, your, your shoes melt? <laughs> yeah, that's what everyone asks. Um, is that true or is that just like an urban legend? Uh, yeah, see, I think it's one of those things where people want it to be true, and I guess it could be true if you like wore like little like racing flats or something, but I wore some pretty just substantial shoes, and I ended up changing my shoes. I made the decision to try and keep my feet from getting too moist so I didn't end up with you know two epic blisters. So... Um, We'll, get, we'll put pictures of your feet up there for the guys to see later on. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't want to subject them to that. And then what was the bling? What's the hardware you get for finishing a race? You get a buckle, right? Yeah, actually, um, you get a pretty sweet buckle. It's like this big, and it's... Um... And he finished in third place, by the way, folks. We forgot to say that before. Oh, yes, third place yes. out of 96 accomplished, 94 accomplished runners. Yeah, I think they take like around that. 90, 94, 95 people or something. And, yeah, I was lucky enough to end up in third, and... Um, which is pretty good on, um, I think there's a, a lot to be said about having done the race before. I think you can learn a lot and I think you're more prepared for what you're going to face out there. And there's, um, there's definitely, I think, uh, a benefit from knowing where you can push and where you might not, where you, you think you can push and you're really not going to be able to push. If you look at the course profile, you're like, oh, I should be able to push when I get to the top. And you're like, 
oh, now that I've run that, I yeah. know that that's not going to happen. Right, right. But like, uh, you know, if I push at the beginning, maybe I would be in a better position later on. So you got that awesome silver belt buckle and everything. That's so cool. Um, I, I, we, we got about two minutes left here. I, I have to get into this because um, you also had you had a really big summer with your running, and you just set a PR and qualified for the. Olympic trials yes. by running a 217 yes. up in uh, Minnesota. That's awesome. Tell me about that real quick. That was fantastic. Yeah, it was like a three or three and a half minute PR and I didn't really take a break for it. I ran Comrades. I was the 11th finisher, the first guy not to get any hardware mm, uh, awesome. and the first American though. Uh, and then the next weekend I ran, like six days later, I ran the North Face 50 miler, ended up third there. Next day I ran the North Face half marathon, was first there. And then I had uh, Lawyers Have Heart 5K, and then I ended up running the quali trials qualifier at Duluth. And I ran you know, a big PR there. So my big goal this year was to qualify for the Olympic trials. And uh, I've got another big goal to try and come home with a gold from the 100K world champs in the Netherlands, which the whole family's here. And we're going to you know, go over there together and make a good trip of it, I think. Awesome, man. Um so you're be in Houston in January then for uh, for the Olympic trials. Yes. And we're gonna get you in the top three, and we're gonna send you to the Olympics in London. That would be awesome. I think I got to do a lot of work between now and then, but <laughs> you know that's that's the cool part about the U.S. is whoever shows up on the day and runs the time gets to go. Okay. Um, hey man, we're running low on time here. Um, you know, thank you so much for taking time out. I know you've been. Uh, you're always busy. Yeah. <laughs> You're always running three or four times a, a day. You, I try you, to, yeah. You work a full-time job, and you got two awesome kids in here, a five-year-old and a, and a two-year-old? Yep. You got Pierce and Grant and Jennifer's here. They're st sitting, standing by outside. They got to play in here a little bit beforehand. They so. did. They did. Maybe we'll put some little footage of them at, in here, too. Yeah. Um, they're out, th out there cheering you on like they always, always are for all your races. Yes. But uh, you know, you can go read, about, read more about Michael on his website. It's michaelwardian.com? I think it's mikewardian.com. Mikewardian.com. Okay. Yeah. He's got some, uh, got his, his his calendar up there and a, lo a lot about him. And yeah, you know, you can you can Google him. You're all over the place, man. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm lucky. I've got a I've got a good group of sponsors that allow me to do a lot of cool things, and you know, people in the community always supporting me, and so I'm I'm just blessed. And then, of course, my family and friends and. Um, my my boss at work makes it all possible. You got a lot of fans and, and a lot of support out there, and you're doing some great things for the DC running community, man. So thank you very thanks much. Thanks a lot for coming on the show, man. It's been a, a true pleasure, and uh, we'll definitely have to have you back on. We'll get Farley in here. And we'll, yeah, that would be uh, great, we'll do it man. Again, man. Yeah, it looks like we got a little bit more to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, th thanks a lot, Michael. We'll take we'll take it easy, and we'll talk to you next time, man. Sounds great. And we'll see you guys next time on Guy to Get Running. Bye bye, everybody. Bye.